So suppose you purchased a second hand uh, Kramer machine. Before you take it in production, you want to ensure that the software in the machine is actually the software that was designed for the machine. Because we have the, uh, the machine software, which is running in the processor board of the, in the uh, electronic cabinet. We got the software for the detection unit, which is these two EEPROMs here. And we have the software for the touchscreen. And if those three do not match with the original design, then you may have uh, problems with counting. You may have miscount or, or you got strange error messages or whatever. So we're first gonna check if the software is compatible with this machine. So how do we do that? Well, on the more recent models, we have an information screen here, which will tell you the terminal program. You can also see that here in the left top corner, the database, which is usually the same a number as the terminal program, the machine program with its options, that's what's running in the processor board in the electronic cabinet, and you can see here the detection program. Now on the older types you will not see the detection program here because that information is not uh, communicated back to the HMI. So therefore we need to take off the top cover. You will see two EEPROMs here, an odd and an even one. And it will tell you uh, what software version is installed in this detection unit. And in this case, that's CF1220 VE. Because you never know when you buy that machine or when you bought that machine, if this detection unit actually came with the original machine. Maybe it didn't. Maybe they took it over another machine. So you'll have to verify that, whether this, this whole set is a set belonging to this machine. Now you can call Kramer. They will tell you they have a database. You give them the serial number. They will tell you what software should be installed. Or you can send us an email and then we'll uh, check it out for you. Okay, so let's assume you figured out, yes, this is a software set belonging to this machine. It was designed for this machine. Then the next step we're gonna do is check if this detection unit is still in a serviceable condition. So what we're gonna do, we have uh, here a product detector test that we're gonna check. We can see the, uh, the voltage levels for each channel we can see that the channel width is 20 millimeters, which is standard for the 1220. We can see that the product length was set to 25 millimeters. We can see that the product width was set to two millimeters. The level of detection, which is calculated against the product width. We can see we're not running with a channel insert. We're not running clear products. And the distance to the vibratory plate and the center line of detection is 35 millimeters. So that means 35 millimeters from the, this edge over here to the center line of detection is 35 millimeters. That should be approximately 35. Okay, so this looks all good. We can see that, uh, or we can check if it responds, if we put something in the channel. You can see channel one there, two. See, they all respond. So additionally, we should also see some counts over here, if we reset that. If we trigger the sensors. They all work. So, so far, this is all good. Now we're gonna check the behavior of this unit if we make some changes to the settings. So for instance, let's change the product width. 
the product width is set to uh, two millimeters. Let's change that to 15 millimeters. Now let's see what happens. Go to the product detector test. And we can see here, the product width has changed to 15 millimeters. Yeah, so it, that setting was communicated to the detection unit and it reads back from the detection unit this setting again and it is 15 millimeters as it was set here in the settings. So that's all good. Now, I got a about two millimeter Allen key here. We've set the product width to 15 millimeters, so you would expect that it will not detect this one. So we're gonna check that. And you can see none of the channels will detect this Allen key. So that's all good. Now, sometimes you probably run these kind of soft gels. They are clear products. And if you don't change the settings for this uh, specific product, it will not count properly. Usually you get undercounts in your bottle because one of these uh, capsules was counted as two. So in this case, we need to set the clear product setting, you need to set it to one. And uh, watch this what happens because the smallest product width is at the moment 15 millimeters. If I change the clear product setting to one, change to one, you can see that the smallest product width is also adjusted because the sensitivity of the sensors are adjusted because this is a, a clear product. And if we check again the uh, product detector test, we can see here that the product width was set to two millimeters internally, even though we set it to 15 before, now it's two. And the clear product setting here is now on one. So the detection unit is set up to count these kind of uh, clear products with a length of 25 millimeters and a fixed setting of two millimeters, which is the sensitivity to detect this product. So if we drop this product into the channel, you will see that it will count as one piece. So now it's 12, we put this one in here and it's 13. Another thing that you may want to check, the uh, inserts, this divider, for the detection unit, they come in uh, different sizes. And this is a 20 millimeter insert, but there's also a 16 millimeter insert. If you have the 16 millimeter insert, you will have to set uh, the channel insert here. You will need to set it to one, one. And then if you check the product detector test, you can see that the, uh, the length and width is still the same. And now the channel insert is set to one, which means we have installed the 16 millimeter insert. However, we haven't actually installed the 16 millimeter insert because this is the 20 millimeter insert. And uh, the detection unit knows that or it, it measures that it measures that there's something wrong because it receives light enough for 20 millimeters but actually the setting says that you should run it with a 16 millimeter insert so it knows something is wrong and then you can see here that the first light is actually off now because it gives you a channel one defect if you check the uh the uh, error messages here you can also see channel defect one and that's because we put the wrong insert in the detection unit so there's nothing wrong with the detection unit there's also nothing wrong with uh, channel one it's just an indication that the insert is wrong so if we change that back 
we change it back to zero. Okay. We change it back to zero, channel insert zero. This light or LED, this one has come on now. So channel one is okay. If we reset it, reset, then we see the channel one error has gone as well. So if you have ch channel one error, errors, specifically only channel one errors, then most likely it is because the, uh, the insert setting is wrong. And if you have a 16 millimeter insert in here, while it, the channel insert was set to zero, so it expects a 20 millimeter insert, you will get the same error message. You will also get an error on channel one. Okay, let's uh, put the settings back and then we check it one more time. Settings, channel insert zero, clear product, no, we don't have, put it on zero. Uh, product length is fine, 25 millimeters, smallest product width, let's say, uh, yeah, three millimeters. Okay, we check the product detector test, and we see 25, product width, three millimeters, the channel is at zero, clear product is also zero, and now, uh, if I put my Allen key there, it should still count it. You can also see that if you count something, the LED for that channel will turn off quickly. See, for a moment it will turn off. So that's a double check that yes, this unit works as it should.